Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our next guest here joining us, Jennifer Vasquez. She's a birth doula from Pinellas Doula Services based out of Florida and so excited to have her here to talk about this amazing work she does because she's really helping so many families, mothers, children, babies, and we're excited to have you. As a mom, I'm really excited. So how are you, by the way? Thank you, Jill. Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good, sweetheart. Tell me a little bit about the work you do. Yeah, absolutely. So as a birth doula, um, you know, it goes back to prehistoric times, really. Um, they've kind of been coming about more often as of lately, which is so exciting. Um, so the term doula kind of got started back in 1960 around the birth movement, yeah. when really women really became more interested in having a non-medicated, low intervention birth. So in 1992, doulas of North America, Dona, they um, are the first company to train and actually certify doulas. So that is who I completed my certification for back in 2018. Amazing. Now, hold on. How do we find you? What's the website? Yes, my website's www.penalisdoulaservices.com. And I do only service uh, Florida, Tampa Bay, Pinellas County area. Um, so if you're not located here, just Google doula in your zip code or area and you can find other doulas that can support you. Okay. Now tell me, I want to know before we talk about your work, where were you born and raised? Yes. So I was born in North Carolina, but I was raised uh, right here in Pinellas County, Florida, since I was just a couple of months old. Um, so I've been here my whole life. Oh my goodness. And let's establish a little bit about what brought you into this field? Would you mind sharing a little bit of your, your backstory in a sense? And, you know, when you grew up, uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about that? I got to read about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I was seven years old when I saw my first birth. Um, it was my sister. She was having my nephew. And I was like tucked away in the corner of the room, just pretty much in awe about what I was experiencing and seeing. And so when I started looking up what I wanted to do when I grew up, I really found that I had a passion for what being a doula encompasses because of the nurturing and support aspect um, versus like the clinical side of childbirth. Oh my goodness. So at a young age, you knew this is pretty uh, amazing. I love it. I love it. And I want people to visit the website and uh, you're in Pinellas County, Florida. So Pinellas Doula Services, let me just, uh, you know, sp uh, spell that out. P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S-D-O-U-L-A. S E R V I C E S dot com. And I love that you gave us a little bit um, of insight to what it actually a birth doula is, right? Because some people were like, probably are like, wait, what is that? I don't understand. And as a mom, I have a seven and nine year old. I honestly, didn't know what they were. And I had my kids at the hospital. And then now looking back at, after learning about this, there's so many benefits to this, right? Could you share a little bit a bit about the benefits of having a birth doula and what it all entails? Yeah, absolutely. So as a birth doula, we really are, we're hired by the family to support you, learn about your likes, dislikes, really talk about all things birth. So we'll have a couple of prenatals um, where we'll kind of just dive into it and talk about your different options. Um, we work both in hospital and out of hospital and we're there to support the whole family. So, um, you know, any partners, we really kind of help, help have like a calm presence to the room, especially someone who's been a part of births, who kind of knows, um, some questions to ask or, um, really, I think the main thing with having a doula is you learn your options. There are so many things that you may not even know that you have the right to, such as wearing your own clothes, um, you know, intermittent monitoring versus like continuous monitoring, standing up and walking around. So just a lot of things that help encourage our body to get things going, to keep things going. And then ultimately um, having a birth doula does significantly decrease the risk of having a cesarean section. Um, there's about a 10% decrease in pain medication and around a 30% decrease in just being dissatisfied with the birth experience. Um, because a dual is there, we don't really leave your side. So um, you have that someone who 
offers a calming presence and is there to just help walk you through all steps and provide any suggestions as well. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And let's talk um, a little bit about, um, you know, some of the uh, other advantages about it, because reducing the anxiety, right? Talk about the the depression. I know the oxytocin, I was reading your notes before about that, like even resulting in less pain, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So your body produces what um, it's oxytocin. So it's considered the love hormone, which has natural pain relief benefits to it. So one thing a, bull, a doula does is just help make you feel safe. Um, even small things such as dim lighting, um, bringing like a comfort item from home. We encourage that um, physical touch. We do a lot of physical touch if that's something that you like. Um, and a lot of just physical and emotional support. So that way you feel comfortable. Uh, we learn, we help show you how to cope with labor mm -hmm. and get the most out of each contraction or surge that I like to call it. Um, right. You know, labor generally does have a, a pattern to it, similar to a wave. And the more that you recognize that pattern and learn to work with it instead of fight against it, it allows your oxytocin levels to boost, um, which yes, it reduces anxiety and um, some of the depression that can come postpartum as well. If you look back at your birth experience and you feel that you were in control of making decisions or even just that you were comfortable with asking certain questions. Yeah. Um, so that's a big part of it too, is just feeling comfortable to ask questions. Yeah. Well, you know, in, you know, regular medicine, you get that epidural if you want the pain and that could be a painful traumatic experience on the woman, let alone the child. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because that also is very dangerous. I mean, you're not a doctor, but just, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. A child, right. Yes. And there's a wonderful documentary called The Business of Being Born uh, that I highly suggest people watch. It really does just talk about the um, American health care system and how they approach childbirth. And, you know, one thing that is a common term we use is cascade of intervention, where, yeah, it's like you kind of start one intervention, which can lead to others and then sometimes to an emergency section. And it can be like, oh, well, good thing we started all those interventions we pre prevented something traumatic from happening. Whereas some of those early on in interventions can cause the high anxiety, can cause labors to stall, which then, you know, they may want to start Pitocin to help get things going again. And so um, knowing your options and knowing what is like medically necessary versus what could just be a little bit convenient at the time is really what a doula helps like look out for and educate you on. Um, because yeah, there are, you know, side effects to, to certain things like epidurals where it may not work fully. Um, and so that's something a doula helps with as well is even if you do get an epidural, there's still a lot of different options for you with regards to labor positions yeah. mm -hmm. and delivery positions. So that way um, you don't feel so stuck. Got it. Well, these are the things that you work with. And I want to hear a little bit about some of the breathing techniques you're teaching people. I was reading about massage gun. There's peanut ball. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the work you're doing. And when, by the way, when is it right to hire a doula? When do you start working with that person, right? Because excitement of having a baby, you're pregnant. And then how, when do you usually meet your clients? Yeah, that's a great question. I say as early as possible, if you're looking for a doula, um, not only because potential availability, but also um, the more that the more time that you have to just be comfortable with someone, um, the the better for both of you. So yeah, I'd say look into getting a doula as as early as possible, as early as you decide that that may be right for you. And during the different prenatal meetings, that's one thing we talk about is the different techniques. So yes, uh, calm breathing. You know, it's funny when you look at TV shows or you see childbirth like on movies, it's always that like fast breathing that not may not be the best because it can kind of lead to anxiety and just, you know, less oxygen. So we work on like slow breathing techniques. Um, we talk about the different things that I can do physically to help you. For example, one of the most common is hip squeezes. Oh, uh, really just. Go? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Did we lose connection? Oh, I don't know how I hit my video. Hi, oh, you're I'm back. here. I'm back. I'm here. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So hip squeezes is a really common um, 
common tool that we use. And essentially it is just squeezing the, the woman's hips and it helps with a lot of that counter pressure, same with the lower back. And we show your partner or your family that's going to be there with you how to do that as well. So they know how to support you. Um, so one of my actually like favorite tools in childbirth is a comb, like a hair comb. So you hold it in your hand like this. So the bristles are against your palm. And if you, especially if you start to feel a little sense of being out of control, squeezing that lightly can help kind of ground you and bring you back and give you a bit of a sense of control. So you squeeze it along with the contraction. Okay. Um, and I've used that in almost every birth that I've attended. Amazing. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And I also want to ask, let's talk about how having a doula really affects the partner or you know, the family of the mother. Yeah, for sure. So let's be real, you know, women, I think in general, but especially, especially laboring women, we don't want to be told just breathe, just relax. Like, yeah, the sentiments there and we can appreciate it, but also it can be a little counterintuitive sometimes. And so during the prenatals, you really dive into how your partner can help you. Yeah. Um, so a lot of nonverbal communication or just like positive affirmations. Um, one of my favorite is your body, your baby. You know, I've had women ah. just like repeating that to themselves to remember that what they're experiencing is their body and their baby working together. Um so yeah, we go into that a lot. And, you know, family members being there is wonderful. Um, but also, you know, they have needs too. they need to eat, shower, maybe go home if it's a, a lengthy labor. So a doula is there. We really don't leave. If so, we usually have a backup doula that can come in. So it kind of gives them that freedom to maybe step outside for a little bit or grab some food without feeling like they're leaving you alone. Got it. Now, also, by the way, tell us the areas of people you're working with, because I know you're in Florida. Uh, do you do work out of state or it's and, and do virtual sessions or is it really more hands on in person? Yeah, so I do offer virtual sessions for um, the pregnancy aspect, um, not so much being there for the labor and delivery. I tried doing it a little bit back during when COVID happened over the phone. And it's just very hard because you can't read the room. So I do offer pregnancy doula services virtually. Um, but otherwise, my standard, you know, pregnancy, labor and delivery is just in Florida in my area. Got Hopefully it. one day I can branch out. <laughs> All right. Well, let's remind everyone at this time how we can reach out to you since we are halfway through. Could you share the website again, uh, phone number, any social media pages before we continue? Yes. So my phone number is 727-645-1832. And my website is www.pinalisdoulaservices.com. I do have resources on there as well. So even if you're not in Florida or in my area, I encourage you to check out my website. Um, the social medias as well, Facebook and Instagram, Pinalis Doula Services. Um, and then ultimately, just reach out to your your local um, doulas or just other educators in the area, too, if you're um, just interested in having a doula, because they'll be able to help give you more resources, too. Beautiful. And by the way, you are certified as well. Could you just share the educational background of, of you know, what, you, what you've done? Yeah, absolutely. So... One thing that's interesting with being a doula is you don't have to be certified because we don't provide any sort of medical advice. Okay. Uh, many doulas decide not to get certified because of certain um, certain criteria and just limitations that that can involve. Okay. Um, so I did get certified back in 2018. As of right now, I am not because it did expire and I'm actually getting certified next weekend through a new company, Grow. And they are with, um, they partner with Healthy Start, which basically is a program and company that helps on all aspects of just the journey into parenthood. So yeah, that's kind of, it, it varies doula to doula, but um, yeah, there's no actual like requirements because of it. It's kind of up to the doula to do their training and feel educated and uh, potentially shadow other doulas as well. So it's one thing that's a little, little unique with it, but it allows for a, um, an easy journey to becoming a doula. So if it is something you're interested in is becoming a doula, I encourage you to look online at local um, programs or Dona was, you know, the website and the company that I first used. And it's a great way to see like if this is something that you're interested in. 
Awesome. And if you don't mind me asking your personal life, I, I was reading that you have a husband, you have some pets. <laughs> yes. So I have a husband. I have a tortoise and a turtle. Oh. Um, no children, about 40 or so house plants that are quite demanding as well. But yeah, a nice little family here. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. I love it because I think that's important. You are a parent, any animal. I have cats, but we have a hamster, but I, I hundred percent, I get it. <laughs> and I love if you go on the website, you get to see her and her yeah. whole family, beautiful family. You Those clearly... are all my nieces and nephews. That, oh um, my goodness. How many total? There for them? Oh my so gosh. I have six with my um, two sisters who I was there for all of their pregnancies, labors and deliveries, and then um, a couple others as well. <laughs> Beautiful. And I also was reading earlier on the site that, you know, more of the duties of a doula, people even ask you to help out with the photography, right? If you're having the baby, like that's all to me, that's so important. I always, I want it on video and I want it taped and I want it, but that's something you would assist them with as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Especially those moments between the woman and her partner um those like intimate moments where I like kind of take a step back and yeah take uh. photos and um make some really special memories for them afterwards and then one thing I do as well is during the labor and delivery if I hear just something funny that is said or something that they may like to reflect on later on I write it down in my notes and present that to the family afterwards because many times they're just in the midst of laboring and they may not notice some things that they say that are either funny or sweet and endearing. And so they'll have that as well to, to take with them. Okay. Now how do you handle an unexpected birth, right? Cause I'm sure that happens sometimes. Yes. So I'm on call. I'm considered on call within the last um, like two weeks of the um, potential due date. So yeah, pretty much what we'll stay in contact up until then and always through text and phone. So I always know what's going on. And yeah, once a family reaches out to me and they say that I'm working with and they say, you know, we think it's go time, um, you know, I'll have a phone conversation to kind of see how things are going on the phone. Um, and then if we deem, yeah, it's appropriate, let me come meet you. I'll either meet at their home or um, at the hospital, depending on what they're experiencing. And yeah. So being on call is, it's exciting <laughs> to say the wow. least. Wow. And I was just going to ask, like, what if you're out of town? What if, I mean, you know, there's so many, but you stay close, obviously to your clients. <laughs> yeah. I don't go out of town if I know that I have someone due within, you know, a handful of weeks um, from when their supposed due date is. Well, do you mind sharing a story or two of some of the clients you've helped and walk us through the process of, uh, you know, I'm sure it's amazing. There's probably so many, but give us some ones out there where people are really grateful and thankful, you know, like, hey, we're doing this again, or I'm telling my friends we have to do it this way. It's so much better to have someone. Yeah, absolutely. So one of my clients, she had had a cesarean birth previously and she wanted to have a vaginal birth this time. So it's called a VBAC. Um, so she hired me as her doula to help support her with that. And the, the, um, let's see the preparedness that she took before labor and everything started really, I think helped with her having such a positive experience. Like she was confident in what her body was doing. We talked about everything through, you know, from from high level things really in the weeds. Um, so that way I knew where, where I could potentially help support her most. Um, towards, you know, so there's something called transition when you're around seven centimeters or so, where transition, you kind of feel like you can't do it anymore. Like you've exhausted all aspects and you're like, I'm done. I can't do it. And recognizing that that is going to happen is something I always talk with my clients about because when we say like, I just can't do this anymore. Like that tells me like, you're close. Like you're getting there though. This is what we talked about. We prepared for this. And her, her hospital did offer nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas. Um, which I am a strong component of in the childbirth um, atmosphere, because there's no side effects. There's no lingering effects either. Um, I don't administer it at all. You know, the hospitals, midwives and birth centers do. And basically, it's this mask you put on your face, you take some breaths, and you feel like you've had a couple of glasses of wine, like, you know, it helps take the edge off a little bit. 
but you can still move around. You know, she was sitting on the birth ball, chanting that my baby, my body to her. And what's really cool about it is when you remove it from your face and take a few fresh breaths, you Mm -hmm. don't feel the effects of it anymore. Uh Um, And so with that, she was able to have a non-medicated, you know, successful VBAC um, with her baby boy. And that's something that I've taken with me um, throughout my doula journey because it was just such a raw experience and her husband was there. um, And ultimately, we made a really good team with him being able to take a nap while I stepped in and then vice versa a little bit. So I was there for about 24 to 30 hours with her continuously. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. And I know we touched upon C-sections before, but uh, even, you know, uh, you're there using, someone is using an epidural, it's um, still, you know, good to have you there because uh, there's still clearly advantages to someone who's doing that um, Mm -hmm. and all the above, right? Absolutely. Even one thing that that I am a a big component of because I've seen the success with it is changing positions. Like every hour is usually my goal. So especially with people who have epidurals, you know, you can't really feel from the waist down. And so I help them change positions, even from going from one side to another. Um, I had a doula client who had an epidural. She was on one side. The progression got a little bit slower. She was getting more anxious. You know, there was talks from the doctors of potentially starting Pitocin, which she didn't want and ultimately didn't need because it hadn't been that very like that long. Um, And so I was like, well, let's try changing the other side and going on the other side. And she did. And pretty much once she did, the baby was able to work down the birth canal in a different manner and her contractions like picked back up and she was good to go. Um, So just changing positions and knowing options, especially with cesarean births, Um, you know, you do still have the right to skin to skin afterwards or the late cord clamping. So um, there's so many options that you have that you may not necessarily be told about. Beautiful. All right. And we only have uh, just uh, four minutes left in the show. We're getting towards the end. Tell us, um, you know, what else did you want to share with us about you and your services? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most important things, not only in the birth world, but just in life is recognizing that you have the right to informed consent, Um, asking questions. If there's something that you don't feel comfortable about, or you're just kind of going through the motions and in the back of your mind, you're like, I don't know about this, voice that to your healthcare provider, to your friends and family. Um, Don't just hold it back because you're afraid of like stepping on toes or anything. Ultimately, people aren't afraid to answer your questions and they want to help you. Um, So I would say that's something that if you don't take anything away from this interview and this conversation, take that, just ask questions and make sure that um, things that you are experiencing and going through that you are consenting to as long as, you know, there's nothing emergent, of course, happening. But yeah, do your research. That's a big part too. look into all of the different options, talk to family and friends about things. But then also take some of what they say a little bit with a grain of salt. You know, every experience can be different. Don't get super frightened or turn off, turned off from one, um, one story. You know, just take it all in and come up with your own opinion and um, what would work best for you. Um, another little thing I like to mention is there's this acronym and you can Google it and, you know, see a nice little handout of it. BRAIN is what it stands for. Um, so I always use that when I make decisions, even in my own like personal life. So it stands for benefits, risks, alternatives, intuition, and need time. And it goes into detail about like what each of those mean, but I encourage you to, to use that, but especially in the birth world, because it allows you to fully think things through and recognize that most of the time decisions don't need to be made right away. You can't ask for, for more time to think things through. Beautiful. All right. And uh, let's remind everyone of all the ways we can reach out to you. Yes. So phone number 727-645-1832 and website www.pinalisdoulaservices.com. And you can find me there on Instagram and Facebook as well. Beautiful. And now uh, tell us, you know, what you love most about the work you do. Ooh, what I love most is the postpartum visit after 
the labor and delivery about a week or so later, we'll um, connect in person postpartum, of course, meeting the baby, but um, just really talking about the experience, um, diving into what happened, what we were happy about, you know, is there any things that the mother wants to talk through? Um, so I would say that's probably the most um, exciting part because not only can we talk about all of the happy and exciting things, but if there was anything that, you know, she needs to just kind of talk about with someone, I can be there for, um, for her with that and the partner too. And of course, meeting the babies. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, if we want to reach out again, uh, please feel free to contact her on the website. Do you offer initial consultation if someone's interested? Obviously, at first, just to talk. Yeah, I do no charge consultation, either virtual or if you're in my area at a local public location where, yeah, you can make sure that I am the best doula for you, that we click, we vibe together, because ultimately we're going to be experiencing and talking about a lot of different things together. So the more um, comfortable that we are with each other, the better it is for both of us. Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much for being here again. PinellasDoulaServices.com. Pleasure to meet you, Jennifer. Thank you for being here. And to all of our listeners, stay tuned. More of the show is coming right up after the break. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.